Good morning. Can you say good morning? All right. So um, today is Moroni chapter six, verses five through nine. And there was a lot today, but um, not a lot, a lot. So anyways, um, in these verses, it's talking about how members of the church should meet together often to edify one another and to um, conduct the meetings by the Spirit. So, um, uh, it says we meet together oft at, to fast and to pray for the welfare of one another. We renew our covenants and promise to, and promise to keep the commandments as we partake of the sacrament. Meetings are vital to the strengthening of the saints of God as his word is taught and we are edified. All meetings are to be conducted by the Holy Spirit, not precluding, of course, that we plan in advance through the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Um, and then it just goes into something, but I'm only sharing what I really liked because that's important. Um, so it gives... A quote by Elder Carlos E. Assay, who in his quote quotes Joseph F. Smith. And it says, It is imperatively necessary at all times, and especially so when our associations do not afford us the moral and spiritual support which we require for our advancement, that we go to the house of the Lord to worship and mingle with the saints that their moral and spiritual influence may help to correct our false impressions and restore us to that life which the duties and obligations of our conscience and true religion impose upon us. Beyond the family, no affiliation is more important or sanctifying than that found within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It was the Apostle Paul who said of those who took upon them the name of Christ, now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Um, there is truth in these sayings that a family who prays together stays together. The same can be said of worshiping together, for it is through worship that family members are drawn closer. The family receives the support of friends and neighbors, and the family allows God to become a vital part of their lives. Um, and then it goes, how can I get more out of sacrament meeting talks? And it gives a quote by George Durant, uh, of the Department of Church History at Brigham Young University. And, um, it's from, I have a question, ends in August 1990. So, the 1990 August ends in the, um article I have a question and it's really good it's talking about how can I get more out of sacrament meeting talks and at the beginning he says well that's a great question because it puts the responsibility on those who can do something about it which is us we can do something about it and he gives a couple suggestions for example he says if you eat a big meal before church you're gonna be a little bit drowsy and therefore you can't focus so eat lightly you want me to clip your nails they are clipped Eat lightly so you can pay attention so that you're alert. And then he says, sit as close to the front as you possibly can. Then your eyes can't wander on all these different things. And um, then he says, keep your eyes fixed on the speaker's eyes. When you, thank you, honey. When you let your eyes wander, your mind wanders too. Um... You can also praise the speaker in your mind. Instead of finding fault with the grammar or lackluster speaking style, um, Bishop Henry B. Eyring once told me that his father said he had never been bored during a sacrament meeting talk. What? Yeah, that's for cleaning your nails. And instead, he said he always supplemented in his mind what he would add to what the speaker was saying. And then finally, perhaps the most important thing we can do to get more out of sacrament meeting talks is to pray for the speaker. Pray that he or she will be able to express his or her message by the power of the Holy Ghost. Um, and then it gives a couple memories. And then... 
Oh, here's here's one. Okay. I wanted to share this one because it was kind of funny. Anyway, so in 7 and 8, it should say it says that there should be no iniquity among them. As oft as they repent, they were forgiven. And so it says, we should seek to repent for our weaknesses and sins so that we might be forgiven. At the same time, we should do all in our power to help others repent. We should avoid judging others. Okay. Okay, but you got to leave my keys, okay? Okay, leave my keys. All right. A middle-aged ward member came into my office, took a seat, and proceeded to outline in some detail an account of a certain failings of another ward member, counseling the bishop that it should be attended to. That is concerning, I responded. Yeah, it's not locked, baby. Open it. There you go. That is, that is a concern, I responded. Wait just a minute. That member is still here after the meeting. Let me go and have that person join us right now so that we can get things cleared up. My visitor looked surprised, so I added, trying to repress, repress the twinkle in my eye, it's always best when there is a concern to get the parties together and talk things out. Well, the member said, I suppose things will work out. Then the person stood up and left my office, never to complain to me about anyone again. Perhaps the person went to review what the Savior said. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled with thy brother, and then come to the, come and offer thy gift. I thought that was funny, because we know those types of people, and we have at times been that person who's like, look at that person. Look at what they're doing. Don't you see that? That's wrong. That should, you need to do something about that. Okay, well, let's go talk to that person. Oh, uh, never mind. I thought it was a funny story and very poignant as well because I think, I think we do that quite a bit. <sighs> I need to think about, um, how often I do it. Anyways, um, and then it just, uh, says that their meaning should be done in the manner of the workings of the spirit, and then, um, and then it gives some concluding thoughts. How do we remember the application of such wisdom in our lives? Speaking of this chapter, the sacrament is the Lord's key for helping us remember our covenants. Moroni confirms in these chapters that the sacrament was administered in his day in precisely the same manner that priesthood leaders of today administer the sacrament. Similarly, we learn that the church in the Book of Mormon times provided a divine institutional environment for nurture, uh, m for nurture much as it does today. The sacramental prayers are to remind us then, as now, of the covenants we have made with our Heavenly Father. We are to exercise our faith and live by the Spirit that we prove worthy of eternal life and exaltation. We will fast and pray, attend our meetings, and demonstrate active concern for the welfare of the souls of mankind. And when we sin, we will repent and move forward in the gospel by serving others in a Christ-like manner. Such is the nature of discipleship in the Lord's kingdom. Ugh. This book is so big. Um, so anyways, I thought that was a good, um, a good one for this fast Sunday, uh, to remember why we meet together often and, and how we should conduct the meetings and, and how to get more out of sacrament meeting. A lot of this week's come follow me for me was talking about how I've, I have begrudgingly gone to church as of late. And so, um... It was, it was a good one. Sorry. All right. Love you all and talk to you later.